This presentation will be outlining the necessary steps to export EAD records from the Archivist Toolkit for import into ContentDM. First, after you open the Archivist Toolkit, open the Resources from the left-hand navigation. In order to determine which finding aids are ready for export, we need to sort the resources by the finding aid status. You can double click the column header and it will sort by status. Those with the approved status should be the new finding aids ready to be imported into ContentDM. Those marked ready for re-import would be finding aids that have been updated and are ready to be replaced in ContentDM. Remember, the toolkit is the master record for the finding aid information. So all edits are actually handled in the Archivist Toolkit and not in ContentDM. Okay, now I'm going to open my first approved record, ready for import. And if you'll notice here at the bottom, if the record opens, there's a button to export EAD, pretty straightforward. We're going to check the box to number our component levels. That's the only setting we've determined we need. We're going to name the document. In this case, I'm going to name it EAD1. It's going to save it in my documents. Click Save. One caveat that I need you to remember as you're naming things, you can reuse a name so it just overwrites a record and you're not building EAD records in the background. That's fine, but you need to remember that if you still have a record named whatever you chose to name it in your Content DM Project client, that name is considered occupied, so you can't really rename it if it's still in your project client the same name. So for us, we sometimes name them one, two, three, four, then we can start back at number one if we know those, those items have been uploaded out of ContentDM and are no longer being used. As it's parsing the record here, sometimes it can take a minute depending on how how long your or how big your EAD record is so now this is finished I'm going to click OK the next step uh, that we need to do is we want to go to the finding aid data tab and we want to change the status from approved and mark that it's in content DM now so that that has been registered so I'm going to click save and save the record and close OK now uh, the next step is that we have to make a couple edits to the XML EAD record. Uh, we're using Dreamweaver to make this change, but you could really use any XML editing software. So we're going to open the EAD record that we saved out of the toolkit. And what uh, the ContentDM software does not like are these ISBN references. So in the schema location here, we're going to remove just this ISBN reference here at the beginning. And then there's a second one in the XMLNS reference here also to an ISBN. We have reported this problem to OCLC, but they've not yet made a fix so that we can eliminate this step. Uh, so we're just going to save this change, and that's all we have to do to edit the XML. We are now ready to work with the ContentDM project client. We're going to open our existing project. If you don't have a project created, you need to create one. It needs to be hooked to the archives inventory collection. In this case, we've named our project Finding Aids. The first thing let's look at are the template settings. So we're going to edit metadata template and edit our general settings. For this collection, we want you to set the collection name for Archives Inventory. That's what our Finding Aid collection is called at DePaul. And Format needs to be set to Manuscript. Now I'm going to click on the Finding Aid tab, and we're ready to import our Finding Aid. From the Add menu at the top, click Finding Aid. You're going to browse to wherever you saved the finding aid after you exported it out of the toolkit. In this case, it's in My Documents. I'm going to click Open there. Uh, for this exercise, we're going to just choose the default thumbnail, but we can uh, create a custom thumbnail for that finding aid if desired. 
this is the mapping screen and um, we need you to refer to the mapping metadata field handout. In this case, uh, you need to pay special attention to this screen because depending on what fields come in off of the EAD record, it can cause some changes that need to occur here in the mapping. Uh, so you need to really look through each of these mapping uh, for every import. Uh, in this case, access restrictions do map to permissions. That's correct. Uh, we don't use arrangement. The biographical history does go to the biographical historical note and so on. So double check these according to your chart. Um, in this case, uh, the corp name does need to be changed to creator. So I'm going to make that change here. Um, format extent is right. Unit date is right. Identifier title. Scope content needs to be mapped to the scope field. I'm going to make that change. Write statement is correct. Address we're not going to use. Publisher does need to go to publisher. Uh, we're not mapping author right now because we've mapped cre creator up there. Uh, subtitle does need to go to title alternative. So I'm going to make that change. And title proper we're not mapping. So I'm going to click next. Uh, on this setting, uh, the, the page structure display that we have chosen for DePaul is to display a single page under description and contents list as a single page here. So these are already set. I'm going to click Next. And then it just tells you the settings that you chose and click Finish. So when you click Finish, the finding aid will be imported.